In this lecture, I want to introduce you to some definitions of reflective practice. Uh, reflective practice and the reflective practitioner have been spoken about for quite a long time. In 1910, Dewey wrote that reflective practice is the active, persistent, and careful consideration of any belief or supposed form of knowledge in the light of the grounds that support it. This means, as a teacher, you will have a questioning approach. You will consider why things are the way they are and how they may be also. Dewey went on to say that being reflective enables us to direct our actions with foresight. It enables us to know what we are about when we act. This is extremely important for the teacher simply because what you do in the classroom and how you behave should have been carefully planned. It should be informed by theory and your experience and it should also be very purposeful. Shown in 1983 presents a slightly different view, a different definition of reflective practice. He regards reflection as having two key aspects and he labels these as reflection in action and reflection on action. Reflection in action refers to the thinking, the reflection that the teacher does moment to moment while teaching is happening, while they're in the classroom. It is a reflection on what the students are doing, what the students are saying and also what the teacher is doing. Reflection in action allows the teacher to see clearly what is happening, to consider why it's happening and then to respond, to do things differently in relation to that reflection. In contrast, reflection on action occurs after teaching has taken place, after learning has happened you may think more deeply at this point about what the pupils didn't understand, for example, what caused something to happen in the classroom and what options were available to you while you were teaching. Your responses will depend, therefore, on the level of knowledge and experience and your understanding of theories and the values, the beliefs that you have as a teacher in relation to this type of reflection. In reflective practice, therefore, practitioners engage in a continuous cycle of self-observation and self-evaluation. This then leads to a better understanding of our actions and our reactions, and this prompts learning for ourselves and supports learning for our learners. The goal, therefore, of reflective practice is not necessarily to address a specific problem or a question, a query that you define as a teacher, but to get you to think about your practice in general on an ongoing, continual basis. For example, Practitioners frame the problem of the situation. They determine the features to which they will attend, the order they will attempt to impose on that situation, and the directions in which they will try to change what happened. This is what reflective practice is about. In this process, they identify, they identify both the ends to be sought in reflection and also how reflection will take place, the means by which reflection will occur. Consider these questions then as a reflective practitioner. Which definition do you prefer and why? Based on these definitions, which elements do you think are most important for reflection? And finally, think about this question. Is there something missing that you think should be included in a definition of reflective practice.